chapter 3. Are you truly born of God and risen with Christ? During one of the days of my in-house confinement, which was referenced in the introduction of the book, the Lord told me that he had called me for one purpose only, to go and prepare people for his coming, and that he would send me to his churches, because 99% of all those in his churches do not know him. For how could they know him when they do not love him? And how could one love him except he obeys all he has commanded? Therefore, every Christian who desires eternal life, no matter the position or length of service in the Lord, should bluntly answer the above question with candor. For whoever deceives himself or herself with the things of God is doomed forever. For everything written here is specifically according to the teachings the Lord gave me. In the many churches the Lord has led me to minister to, when I asked for a show of hands of all who believe they were born of God, born again, nearly all hands would be up. But after about 10 to 15 minutes of ministration on the topic and the same question was repeated, hardly any hand would be up. These were people who were honest to themselves, knowing fully well that it was a matter between them and God. Without a spiritual understanding of what it is to be truly born again, it is not possible to walk in agreement with God. For God is a spirit, and the one who is born of him must of necessity be of the spirit. And if of the spirit, it means that one who is born of God is spirit. And if of the spirit of God, he is God because he is born of God, small g. As thought provoking as this may be, nonetheless, it is biblically true and correct. One who is born of God is a replica of God, fused together in one spirit with God. This is what is meant by total transformation into the image of Christ. This is becoming one with Christ as Christ is one with the Father. I and my Father are one. He who has seen me has seen the Father. John chapter 10 verse 30 and John chapter 14 verse 9. The scriptures tell us that in the beginning, God created man in his image and likeness. See Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. That image was a perfect image of God because God is perfect. With the subsequent fall of man went with it the loss of that perfect image. God, out of his loving kindness, grace and mercy, sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, for the sole purpose of restoring that perfect image and relationship to those who believe and obey his voice. All things produce and reproduce themselves in accordance with their kind. And when God produces or reproduces, he reproduces God. This is being born again as God. It is impossible for a banana tree to produce orange fruits. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. John chapter 1 verses 12 to 13. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. John chapter 3 verse 6. In other words, whoever is born of God, spirit, is God, spirit. But how many of us can truly and honestly say that they are one with Christ and therefore God's, the light and salt of the world to unbelievers and even to the devil? Why is this a matter of importance? Without a total transformation, that is, a true spirit of God, no one can worship God in spirit and in truth. For God is a spirit, and unless we are spirit of his, born of him, it is impossible to relate with him. See 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. The natural man, that is flesh and blood, cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God because they are spiritual, just as flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God. 
see 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. That is why whoever professes to be in Christ must, of necessity, be a completely new creature, without any old raiment of any kind remaining. For when Christ enters, he makes all things new. See Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, and Revelation chapter 21, verse 5. The problem is that most of us profess to be new, but in reality, we are just clouds without rain because some of the old in us remain to this day. Therefore, most of us are old wine trying to enter into a new bottle. All those in Christ must put on Christ. Christ abides in them and they abide in Christ. They become Christ, one with him. See Galatians chapter 3 verse 27. They are those led by God's spirit and they are the true children of God. See Romans chapter 8 verse 14. And as the scripture says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. This is why the scripture relevantly tells us, he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. 1 John chapter 2 verse 6. Therefore, those who are born of God must walk in newness of life, anchored in righteousness and holiness as God is. And that you put on the new man who was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24. I recommend that the reader endeavors to read Ephesians chapter 4, especially verses 14 to 32. These verses give a glimpse of an insight of the new creature in Christ. Being mindful of a chance that some readers might be uneasy with the position and statement that whoever is born of God is God, let the scriptures be the source. In the book of Psalms, God called his true children gods. I said, you are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. Psalm chapter 82 verse 6. Our Lord cited the scripture to the Jews who were offended by his claim that he was one with the Father. Is it not written in your law? I said you are gods. John chapter 10 verse 34. Assuring Moses of the power and authority of the new spirit in him, God made him understand that he, Moses, was God to others. Concerning the ministerial relationship between Moses and Aaron, God said, so he shall be your spokesman to the people, and he himself shall be as a mouth for you, and you shall be to him as God. Exodus chapter 4 verse 16. And concerning Pharaoh, God said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh. Exodus chapter 7 verse 1. When we are in agreement with God, his spirit abides in us, and as such, we become gods to unbelievers and even to demons. <laughs>